In case you missed it, a new generation of Intel CPUs just launched. And in case you also missed it, you're gonna need a brand new motherboard with a brand new socket for it. So let's start off as usual with Gigabyte's offering, the Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7, which will cost you a whopping $290, despite this thing being the entry level model in Gigabyte's Aorus lineup. So what did they do to try and justify that kind of price? Well, starting off a CPU. CPU power. Here we have 16 plus 1 plus 2 phases, just like last gen, but this time rated at a maximum of 80 amps, which, you know the drill by now, is more than enough for any CPU, especially when combined with 2 for 8 pins for CPU power. And then in terms of the memory, Gigabyte actually read this thing at up to 9200 mega transfers per second, thanks to its support for CU DIMM, which we did a video about recently, so you may want to check it out, it's coming up in the iCards, if you're still confused about what that collection of random letters even means. Anyway, moving on to PC expansion, as we can expect, we do have primary PC, PC Gen 5 slot, and unfortunately, Gigabyte continued the doctrine of not including any PC 1X slots, just for the aesthetics, which, okay, here is a bit more justified given how the slots are actually four lanes each running at Gen 4. They're not actually electrically 1X, so that is nice. Plus, storage-wise, you do get four M.2 slots, as is to be expected nowadays, with one of them being Gen 5 and the rest being Gen 4. To wrap things up when it comes to storage, you do also get four set of connectors, which I still wish was six, but I'm just kind of tired of complaining about that at this point. And in terms of other internal connectors, you do get just six various fan headers, which I wish was eight, but oh wow, and the kind of standard three addressable and one not addressable RGB connectors you'd expect in most mobile boards around this price nowadays. Turning it around and looking at the rear I.O., the one thing that Gigabyte has usually been pretty decent at, well, we do have nine USB Type A ports, so they haven't gone as all out as some other mobile boards in Gigabyte's history, but it's still acceptable, and you do have a USB Type C Thunderbolt 4 port, aka running at 40 gigabit. Though strangely you only get display port for integrated graphics, no HDMI. And I still don't get why they flip flop between HDMI and display port when it comes to graphics on their boards. It's like they flip a coin every time to decide which one they're gonna include on which model. It seems to be completely random. Apart from that, you also have 2.5 Ethernet, Wi-Fi 7 as well, including the new Easy Plug connector to make plugging it in much easier, and also, unfortunately, another bad habit that Gigabyte just can't get rid of, just the two audio jacks and optical spdiff, which I still think is unacceptable, and I feel like at this point they're just trying to wear me down until I stop complaining. Though one interesting thing about this motherboard is you may notice things are kind of weirdly spaced out, like there's just this massive gap in the middle. I kind of like it because it isolates the USB Type-C port from everything else. Usually when you have a single Type-C port hidden within a sea of Type-A's and other connectors, it can be very hard to find when you're just blindly poking around the back of your PC, and you may end up just jamming this usually pretty high power cable into a port it's not supposed to go, thus messing stuff up on your PC. Trust me, I've done that. Thus, having it a bit more isolated from everything else is a great way to make locating that single Type-C port at the back of your PC much easier, so it's a nice touch there. But does all of that justify the price? Well, compared to last gen, there's not too many changes here, though the aesthetic is one thing that definitely has improved, and it's great to see how much you're able to refine the look of it each generation, though still for the price you would expect a bit more. But of course, there's a big issue. You need one of these brand new motherboards if you want to run the new Intel CPUs. And like with AMD this generation, where you can just pick up an older gen model, here you have to go with one of these new ones. And unfortunately for Gigabyte, there's plenty of cheaper Z890 mobile boards as well. But are those things any good? Well, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our coverage on those. But still, this mobile board is by no means bad. It looks great and has pretty much everything you need. So if you want to get it yourself from the Amazon, and new links to it will be up in the iCards and down in the video description below, where you're also going to find our Patreon, because even a single dollar a month truly goes a long way as we embark on this mission to cover every AMD and Intel mobile board. Plus, huge thanks to Gavin Byrne, this is just a rage, Ella Ronnie, Bart Shavoka, Patrick Harrison, not a pseudonym, Max Sumner, Gene Allcroft, and Level Up. But anyway, that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.